Good morning, everybody. On this Tuesday, it is April the 2nd, and I'm Chris Allen here to talk about severe weather today here on the SAM channel, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and X, all sponsored by Ace Hardware Marketplace. Well, we've had a round of some strong to severe storms this morning, but those have pulled away. It was kind of the setup for what may come later. And it still looks like we're going to see some activity later today. Uh, let's check on how things are going right now. The Plano cam, you can see the dark sky as I'm looking here from my home in Plano. It's almost 830 as I'm doing this live. And by the way, thanks to, uh, wow, we had a uh, couple of thousand people in here yesterday. That was amazing. Thank you for uh, being a part of this um, and for getting your information uh, from right here on the SAM channel. Uh, we're, we're going to see an active day. You can tell just by looking at the sky that uh, even though we've had some thunderstorms this morning and some scattered showers, that's about all we've had here in the Bowling Green area and much of Southern Kentucky We've had a few severe thunderstorm warnings and even a few tornado warnings north of us this morning, but nothing confirmed as far as any tornado activity. It was a lot of warnings simply because we could see and the weather service could see that rotation that's going on in the atmosphere, low level jet coming in one direction, the winds at the surface and speed. And then high above us, you could see winds coming in a different direction and going at a different speed. And we call that wind shear. There's a lot of that. I mean, just speed shear, uh, low level jet shear, upper winds shear. I mean, there's all kinds of shear going on. It's a very, what we call dynamic atmosphere. And anytime you have that, it's, it's something's going to happen. Uh, we've got available moisture. We've got all the ingredients needed for severe weather. So we're now just kind of in that in-between time to see what happens between now and this afternoon. We've got to let this kind of play out before we can say, here's for sure what's going to happen. We can say at this point, here's what we think will happen. And we're, of course, leaning toward the worst case scenario, because if everything comes together as we see it, or as we think we see it right now, then it could be worst case scenario. But if we have something happen between now and then, like if we can keep a lot of these clouds that I'm seeing out here today, if we can keep some scattered showers around here, that would cut down on the level of the more active weather later. I still think we're going to get some active weather. So don't write that off. Uh, I still think we're going to get some strong thunderstorms, severe thunderstorms. And I do think there will be some tornado warnings like this morning, somewhere in our viewing area, whether it's right here in Southern Kentucky, Northern middle Tennessee, or somewhere else. It's, it's every ingredient needed is there. The question now is the timing and the severity. How severe will it be and when will it happen? So my best estimation on everything is still looking like afternoon, evening, and then it's out of here. That'll, that'll be when the cold front comes through and everything is pretty much done and the air becomes stable and it will become cooler. And that's another thing. We've got the clash of the different air types, warm, moist air ahead of the system, cold, drier air back behind it. Here's a look live downtown Bowling Green from our AAA systems weather camera that's up on Reservoir Hill looking down and you can see some of the scattered showers that are out there, not really any breaks in the clouds. And I do expect to see some breaks in the clouds as we go through the next few hours. How long those breaks will kind of determine how severe things are going to be a little bit later in the afternoon and evening. Uh, again, we've got 
everything, all the ingredients needed for a severe weather outbreak, one that could be quite uh, strong, maybe even devastating, if the atmosphere is allowed to be cut fully loose and wide open. That's like mashing on the gas pedal to the floor. That is a possibility. But will something govern it back a little? Let the pedal, let the, you know, come off the gas pedal a little bit. There's a lot of instability. I describe it like when you hit a pothole, you're going down a very nice, smooth, paved road, and then all of a sudden you hit a pothole. Same thing happens in the atmosphere. It's going on right now. How many of those potholes we have will determine how unstable the atmosphere gets. And so we don't know that yet. We've got to let this morning play out over the next several hours to see what is going to happen. But stay with me. I'm going to take you through it step by step. I'm going to start with the weather briefing that's been updated this morning from the National Weather Service in Louisville. And here's what they're saying. Again, kind of focusing on the worst case scenario, but there's still some questions here as to how this will play out. Notice the level four moderate risk red shaded area has been extended further south to take in E-Town all the way down to looks like Hodgenville, Bardstown, Harrodsburg. Yeah, that's, that's an extension of that level four here on the scale, moderate risk. We are still under the level three enhanced risk here in Southern Kentucky. Now, as it says here, while a few storms may be severe along and north of I-64, this morning the main threat will be from 2 to 10 Eastern, so that would be 1 to 9 Central but I'm going to go an even shorter window of probably three to eight, three to nine uh, central time. Uh, It's that's what I'm looking at here. And what is still uncertain, as they say, is how much of that instability or fuel for storms is available after the morning storms. That's what I just got through saying. How much of the atmosphere is still going to be juiced and primed for a severe weather event later? I still think with just the forcing of the cold front, there will be enough to pop severe storms and maybe even a few tornado warnings later. The tornado risk is, let's just say, moderate, medium, medium. It's not... It's not medium high. It's not even close to high. It's more low to medium. But still, a threat is a threat. Hail has gone up a little bit more, medium to high or moderately high. I think we could see some large hailstones because of the cold air that's up above us this afternoon. Even this evening, after dark, there could be some, you know, ping pong ball size or golf ball size hail or larger with the system that could put some dings and pings in your vehicles. Wind is the highest threat. Notice it's moderately high, really on the high scale. Even though the arrow's not drawn directly over the word high, it's in the high category. Flooding, flash flooding, eh, moderate. Got to watch for that if you live near a flood prone area. Confidence in severe storms, high. That's gone up from yesterday. And therefore, the extension of that level four moderate risk down as far south as we have it, or they have it from the Weather Service and the Storm Prediction Center. Now, some of that took in this morning. It could be readjusted maybe a little as we go through the day, but that's pretty much where they're going to keep it. Here are the hazards. As I mentioned, it could be up to baseball size hail in that level four area down to E-Town, Bardstown, Hodgenville, Harrodsburg, 
Frankfort, Louisville, Lexington, further north. Here in southern Kentucky, yeah, still pretty good odds that we could see at least, as I mentioned, ping pong or golf ball size hail, still very large. But baseball, that's pretty big, two inches in diameter or higher. And that's going to do a lot of damage just by itself. Here's the wind probability up to 80 mile per hour, 80 mile per hour wind gust today. Uh, that can knock down power lines and trees, power outages may become a thing if all of this happens or to the extent of what we're looking at here. And then, you know, everybody, uh, you know, really focuses on the tornado aspect. There is a possibility of tornadoes and you see the hatched area for the wind and the tornadoes do extend all the way down into the Bowling Green, Southern Kentucky area. The hatched area means there's a greater than 10% probability of a significant tornado within a 25 mile point. So 25 miles from where you live, there's a more than 10% chance you're going to get a tornado this afternoon. If everything comes together as we see it. Um, the tornadoes could be stronger than EF2. We're talking some winds of about 120 miles per hour with some of those EF2 tornadoes, or we could have a few that are stronger than that. Again, if all of this is an if, we have everything coming together as we see it right now. We're hoping that the instability may be cut. As long as we can keep showers in here before the cold front and we keep the clouds in here, that would cut down on all of this, not get rid of it. It won't get rid of it. The cold front itself is a forcing factor, but it will cut down on this, on these probabilities here. Keep that in mind. Don't let your guard down. Flood watch in effect, not for us. That's still going to be up further north, north of Lexington, Frankfurt, Cincinnati, southern Indiana. That's where they could get up to two inches of rain. Uh, the safety messaging, of course, is just, I like this, that the weather services put you a little checklist over here on the left. Do you have reliable, it really should say, do you have more than one reliable way to receive severe weather warnings. You need two or three, and here's six right here in the middle. Weather radio, TV, and regular radio, AM, FM, wireless emergency alerts, weather apps, sirens, sirens. If you live by one, you get a bonus. You're really not supposed to Outdoor sirens are not designed to be heard indoors unless you live near one. These are meant for people that are already outdoors. Soccer fields, baseball, public places that are out in the open, farmers, construction workers. That's who they're for, to tell them to get inside and check the weather. They're not meant for you to hear indoors. That's why you need a weather radio. Internet sites, family, uh, family, friends, coworkers, you know, they're all going to help spread the word too. So checklist here, are you at uh, home, at work, at the store, N know what to do if a warning is issued, have some kind of kit, know where your children are, have a plan for your pets, elderly, everybody. The, these are all wonderful things to have and to know. And to not be caught off guard, that's the worst thing that can happen is to be caught off guard and you're just like, well, nobody told me what was coming. Well, that's interesting because I've had, I had, I had the highest number of viewers yesterday I've ever had on this podcast. It was like in the three thousands. I'm getting there today. Um, you've got, you've got to have multiple ways. There's no reason in this day and time of technology that you don't know what's going on. It's only because you don't want to pay attention. Now, everybody here, you want to pay attention or you wouldn't be here. 
So now let's break it down a little bit more. Let me show you what's going on right now with the radar. Okay. Those of you that are not used to me, <laughs> just be prepared. I'm going to be bold and I'm going to be right up front. I'm going to tell you like it is. I'm not going to sugarcoat any of this stuff uh, because that would be on me, not you. Okay. Here's a look at the radar as of 8 42 AM. Now here's the round of thunderstorms this morning that have been severe, that were severe along the Ohio river. Everything is cleared out back here now from Danville to Richmond to Lexington up through Maysville and into Southern Indiana and Ohio. Well, actually more Ohio now heavy rain. And the leading edge of this is thunderstorms, lots of lightning. You can see the flashes going on there. In Bowling Green, this is good. What you're seeing right here, this is good. You may think, oh, is this, is this going to be a bad part of the storm? No. This is actually helping cut down on the instability. The clouds that we're seeing out there, I know, you look out and you see a dark sky. Is that bad? No. You're just seeing a little bit of the sun. What sun is out there reflecting off of the heavy water content that's in the clouds. I know this because like many of you as a kid, I was scared to death of storms. I would look and I'd say, Daddy, look at that dark sky. It's turning black. And he, he would say, look, it's okay. It just means there's a lot of heavy rain in there. The sun is causing all that water that's in the clouds to give it that black look. It doesn't mean there's going to be a tornado. Just because you see dark skies doesn't mean you're guaranteed a tornado. So I want you to lose that fear right now. Just get rid of it. Tell it to go away. Leave you alone. Get out of here, Satan. <laughs> just let it go <clears throat> as the movie frozen would say let it go now we're seeing some new development to the west but look at this i want you to notice here that are down around memphis jackson tennessee very heavy rain and lots of lightning lots of lightning look at all that now all of this is moving northeast and eventually, this could be the next wave, which is meeting up with this wave, which is over southern Kentucky, western Kentucky, where the atmosphere hasn't been overworked yet, but we've not had any sun. We've not had, it, had any added instability. When I look at this, and I've taken, you know, some classes in radar interpretation and what to look for and what to see and what to red flag and all of that. When I look at this, what I see, and I'll run the motion here over the last hour is that what we're seeing come together here is yes, a little bit more intensity, but I'm not seeing these individual renegade storms. What I'm seeing is a big area of rain. Yeah, there are storms embedded, and they're putting down some very heavy rainfall. This looks more like a heavy rain event than it does a severe weather event. Now, we could get a couple of warnings out of it. There may be something in there, especially further south, down here near Brownsville, Tennessee, in that direction, um, that may be uh, severe. Look at all the lightning, though. I mean, there are thousands of lightning strikes with that, and you can see it's all coming our direction. This is not the main event, but it's part of the beginning of it. The cold front, let me zoom out the other way. The cold front, it's that line right there. You look, well, that's nothing. Well, right now it's nothing, but it's the colder air, and out ahead of the front, we're getting a line of showers that's forming. Now, here's what I'm looking at. If we can keep some of this, some of this rain and thunderstorm activity that's non-severe in, in and around us the next few hours, 
it would cut down on the severity of that line as it comes through. I'm not saying that it will, but I'm saying it's a very good possibility if we can keep that right there doing what it's doing, what it's about to do. I mean, I look out my window right now and it's dark back to the West here at 847 AM. The, uh, the sun is going to, it's going to want to try to come back out in between these areas of storms. Uh, it just depends on how long it's going to take for the air to destabilize that much more, you know, with these storms coming in as to whether we have severe weather or a worse case scenario, hoping that it won't, but we've got to be aware that it could. All right. I just want you to know that. And as a matter of fact, let me go back and show you, sorry, I got out of that too quickly. Let me show you the satellite view so you can see. Call that up. Thank you for uh, being patient. Everybody in the uh, chat room, I appreciate you there this morning. Ooh, hundreds. I'll never get to all of you. But anyway, what I want to show you, um, let's go back to Bowling Green here in the center. System one, part one off to the northeast of us, moving away. Showers. These are just general showers here in the middle. And here comes the next wave and then the cold front back to the west. So knowing that, let me switch to the satellite view. And here you see, look at all those clouds up there with round one. Here we are in the middle with a few breaks in the clouds that you're seeing those little holes opening up. And there's some holes back here north of the land between the lakes. But then out ahead of the, there's the cold front right there. See that big line of clouds? That's the cold front. And back here, that's colder air. We're talking about snow back here. Yeah. Parts of Missouri. Yeah. Snow that's going to come in. Rain changing the snow as the temperatures fall behind that front. Look at all this down that I just showed you around Memphis and Jackson, Tennessee, that is what we call a stratiform. That is one big, thick layer of clouds. And it's doing nothing but raining and raining hard with a lot of lightning. And yes, probably some gusty winds at that. But as far as trying to create severe weather, I don't see it. I don't see it. Now, you may be asking, well, what about the holes that we see here around Bowling Green in Southern Kentucky and Hopkinsville and Madisonville? Yeah. I mean, you're going to see up there toward Campbellsville, over toward Somerset, there's Lake Cumberland. You're getting some sun right now through the clouds, but it's not going to last. Once this moves in over the area and it's coming this way, it's going to negate the sunlight. It's going to bring it down. We're going to be covered in clouds and covered in rain. And the opportunity for, you know, like a tornado outbreak starts to go down. I'm not saying it will, but I'm saying if this keeps going like I see it and knowing the science of this and knowing the radar interpretation and the satellite interpretation and knowing all the things that I know in my 40 plus years experience with all this, that should bring everything down a little bit. I'm not saying it's going to completely erase the severe weather threat, but it may not be as bad as what we were first looking at. Let's hope and pray that that is the case because we, we don't want that. Okay. Now, let me show you what's going on with the atmosphere right here, right now, over southern Kentucky. So we've got a very warm and moist and unstable atmosphere. Notice where it's rained, northern Kentucky is in the 50s right now. Well, that alone stabilizes the atmosphere. That's what rain does. Even in a severe weather situation like this, it is in these times that we're going, how stable is the atmosphere going to stay before it reloads 
or has a chance to reload before the main event comes later? Well, I would say for around the Cincinnati area, Carrollton, even Louisville, you may have had your event for the day up there already. Not saying that for sure, but it sure kind of looks that way because you're only at 59. There's Shepherdsville. There's Shelbyville. Yeah. I mean, you, you look at those numbers and man, I mean, it's 61 upper fifties, 57, 58, but look down here in Southern Kentucky, where we are seventies, upper sixties, some of the showers that are now ongoing into Western Kentucky that I showed you on radar are cooling the, the atmosphere down. Let me turn on the, there's a radar I can show you. See, look at this. We've got showers right now over Bowling Green. None of these are severe, but look, it's cooling the atmosphere down. And back here to the west, cooling it down. That's nice. So we see the temperature. How much precipitation so far? Eh, we've picked up already 12 hundredths of an inch of rain up at the uh, Corvette plant sensor. Not as much down near the Ag Expo Center. And around us, well, look at there, Muhlenberg County, you had a pretty good thunderstorm. In fact, a warning, severe thunderstorm warning earlier this morning, and you picked up a half inch of rain, and there's more coming, coming down. Let's check uh, the dew points. Now, this is the problem. As I mentioned yesterday, look at that, almost 70 degree dew point in Butler County. That's high. Anything above 60 is high, and in, in, this, in this kind of environment, it is dangerous. It could mean for us, if we keep these showers in here, it could turn into more of a heavy rain flooding situation than a severe weather tornado damaging wind threat. But I still think that potential is there. These dew points are running way high. Even where it's raining, that's the higher the dew point, the more moisture that's in the air. And you got to have that moisture for the severe weather to happen. So yeah, there's plenty <laughs> more than enough out there, uh, to start trouble. So when you get dew points this high and you get the sun that comes out and heats up that, at that atmosphere, that's just juiced up and moist and ready. That's when things pop. That's why I say as long as we can keep the clouds in here and the showers in here, that's going to cut down on the instability. It may not get rid of it. I don't think it will because the cold front, again, is going to be the trigger for what happens later. So that's what we got to keep watch of. And we will. All right. Moving on. Let's go to the model viewer, and now we can start to take a look at what's coming around the bend, okay? So we're going to go 76 today. Yeah, I agree with that. 76, 77, 78 maybe. And again, this it a lot depends on whether we get sun out long enough to heat us up even more than that. So I'm going to go 78 just in case. Close to 80 muggy atmosphere. Oof. It's air that you can wear. It's, it's just humid. But look what happens tonight. We fall down to 43, 44. Yeah. That's behind the cold front. That's a cooler, drier air coming in that's going to shut all this severe weather off. And we're going to start to feel better by tomorrow. Tomorrow, we'll still see some leftover showers wrapping around a low-pressure system that brings the cold front. So I'm going to keep it in the mid-50s tomorrow. Low 50s or around 50 on Thursday. Wow. And then look at that. We get close to freezing. Here we go. Another one of those little winters. I thought we were almost done, but I guess not. Those little winters. I don't know which one this one is. Blackberry. I don't know. Linen britches. 
long handle underwear winter. I don't know. But anyway, it's going to be one of those. So here it comes. We're going to have two, almost three days of cooler weather. Then we go right back into spring, right back into the frying pan. Look at that, 70s for much of next week. Doesn't take long, and whatever cool air we get is not going to last long. That's just, you know, it's April now. So it's going to it's going to keep on trucking, going to keep on going. Let me update you here on the uh, surface map. Look at the red. We're in the red. We're in the red zone today, and I don't mean about football. Um, we hope that there are no touchdowns in this particular game because that would be bad, like tornado stuff. Get off here, Microsoft, trying to interrupt my show. Okay, so let's put this into motion. Uh, it's looking, again, this is painted in serious, painted in red, because there is the threat is there. It doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it means that we have everything in place for it to happen. Here's one o'clock this afternoon. This is when the main event would start across the area. The cold front still back to the west. If this event starts as we think it will take place, as far as the potential for, you know, not just the flooding rains, but also the intense lightning, the damaging wind threat, um, the tornado threat, all of that, hail threat then yes, then, then it's all bets are off. It's that this is going to turn into an outbreak situation again, from what I'm seeing right now at almost nine o'clock in the morning, I, I'm hoping that we don't, I'm hoping that enough of these showers and clouds hang around so that this doesn't happen. I still think there will be a severe weather episode or two but nothing like wide open, full throttle. Let's hope not. Here comes the cold front passing through about seven o'clock tonight. There will still be gusty winds, showers, thunderstorms, maybe even a few severe thunderstorm warnings, possibly even a few tornado warnings, especially right there east of I-65 and through the Cumberland Parkway area where there is the possibility you could have a little more sun today than we will in Bowling Green or Western Kentucky. Now, remember, Western Kentucky has already been worked over. Notice the areas that have worked over early this morning clear out pretty quickly behind the front. That's because the energy has been spent, and now the cold front's coming through this evening, and all the bad weather's over. But east of that front, still a very good possibility. Here's 1 o'clock tomorrow morning. Everything moves on. 7 o'clock now. What's happening here? You say, where's that rain coming from? Well, it's from the low. The low is way up here in Michigan. Now, there's wraparound moisture around that deep low pressure system. Look at that. It's 988 millibars. That's a low deep, low pressure system. And even though the center of it is up in Michigan, look at all this snow on the backside of it and mix and then rain on the warmer side of it. But all the way down into Southern Kentucky, we're still going to get some wraparound rain from this thing as it swings through from West to East. So I'm leaving showers and even the possibility of a thunderstorm tomorrow, even though the highs are only going to be in the mid 50s. And then it's going to get chilly after that. Not cold enough for snow. Not for us, but further north, yes. In fact, look at that. Now, all right, let me explain this. 7 a.m. Thursday morning. This map is calling for a little mixture. I, I'm not sure that I agree with that. It's, it's going to be iffy. Okay. This is, this is not looking like it's going to turn into, we go from severe weather one day to 
wintry weather the next. I mean, it's going to get colder, but whether this turns into like snow that you see and deal with, I don't think so down here, but maybe further north and east. Yes, maybe. Maybe it could. So we got to going to watch that. All right. So, um, there you go into that's Thursday morning, 7 AM Thursday afternoon. It's gone. Whatever it is, will be gone pretty quickly. Then you go Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the next system pulls in with a few showers. This is not going to be a big chance. I don't think in the Monday warm front. Yeah. There could be some thunder elevated thunder with a few scattered showers and thunderstorms with this, but it doesn't look like a severe weather episode. And then it's gone by next Tuesday. Now, one more thing I want to show you before we go. Golly. It's, I know it's a long, this is one. Yes. I thought yesterday was the longest podcast I've had with the most viewers, but today I think is going to, is going to best that. Okay. Here is the individual severe weather threat from the Storm Prediction Center for the rest of today. We'll do it one graphic at a time. Severe weather threat, level four, enhanced risk on the scale, almost to the top. It's not a high risk, but a moderate. And, you know, at this point, it doesn't matter. Once you get past three, four, five, three, four, five, those are risk levels. But once you get into three and past it, there's not much difference. But this is the highlighted area for the worst of the weather. Some of it occurred this morning. Possibility of it occurring this afternoon. We're in the level three area. If you're in Bowling Green, Southern Kentucky, Nashville, Chattanooga, Knoxville, on down even to Huntsville, Alabama, big area, big, big area. Individually, let's take a look. Tornado outlook. Again, the highest threat in that same area. But Bowling Green is in the little hatched, what we call the hatched area. The hatched area, 10% probability of a significant tornado of EF2 strength or greater. <clears throat> that, um, that doesn't mean that you will get one. It just means that according to that shade of, excuse me, yellow, 10 to 14% of a possible tornado within 25 miles or wherever you are in that hatched area. So we're not taking that down at all, even though we're seeing more rain and less severe, we still have several hours of this thing to cook and to bake before we can say that we're out of the woods. Severe wind, this would be damaging wind threat, takes in all the area. Again, 30 to 44% probability, and then the hatched area, an added 10% probability of significant wind gust of over 74 miles per hour. That's what I showed you at the beginning. We could have some gust up to 80. That is if, we get the added instability and along the cold front, it still could be possible. The severe hail threat more so North of us. This is where we could see two inch or higher diameter hail baseball size hail. That's big, but we could have close to that down here. Ping pong golf ball size, maybe. It's not out of the question. So what I'm telling you is this, the bottom line, do not let your guard down. Not one bit, even though we're seeing what I look at as more of a heavy rain thunderstorm type situation coming in, which may help, may help cut down on the level of severe weather later today. It is not going to erase it completely. So weather radios, have them turned on, 
and ready to go. Make sure if you have one of these weather radios, the Midland that I've been uh, promoting and selling and programming at Ace Hardware Stores, make sure that little switch right there is on. Because if it's turned off, you're still going to look at it and it shows that it's on, but you won't get any warnings. Make sure that little switch right there is on and make sure you have some fresh batteries in it. Because if your power goes off, which it most likely will in some of the stronger storms, that may be your only source to get the warnings. Okay. Then scan that QR code right there for the News 40 weather app, which it's all morning has been giving me updates on the weather. See? And everything is right there, including, um, you know, bulletins, lightning detection. I had these little pop-ups that said, uh, lightning is within 15 miles of your location. I'm like, Ooh. So that's when I start looking out the window and I can see the dark sky. And then a few minutes later, I see the lightning. Yeah. So do all that, have as many ways possible to monitor the weather this afternoon, crossing our fingers and praying that we don't have the full throttle effect. The full throttle effect would be bad for us. It would be like what happened in 2011. It would be like what happened almost to the day, 50 years ago, the super outbreak of tornadoes in 1974. I still remember it because I was 11, 11 and a half years old. And remember being in my grandparents' basement next door for the entire overnight period. We couldn't go home. It was that bad. I don't want that to happen. None of us do. It could happen. I want you to be ready if it does. But if we can just keep these clouds and these showers around, we may be better off than we were looking at just earlier. So anyway, stay tuned to News 40, WNKY on the app and on TV. We'll crawl the information. Stay tuned to Sam 100.7 on your radio because we will do instant warnings while you're listening to the music. The weather service will pop in and go, this is a warning. We could have dozens of warnings this afternoon, or we could have very few. It's a big question mark right now. The best thing is just be ready. And thank you all for allowing me almost 45 minutes to talk about this. I promise I don't take this long every day. It's usually about 10 minutes to do this on a daily basis, but this update is here every morning, seven days a week, unless I'm out of town or something's going on, but God bless you. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and stay informed. God bless.